Ilan Omar is a very controversial far left Democrat. She's often sided with Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley, and others in the far left. Several years ago, a rumor was circulating that she married her brother to allow him to emigrate to the U.S. much more easily. She has denied this, and for the longest time it was considered just a fringe conspiracy theory. But over the past several months, it's been bubbling up. And now something interesting has happened. The Star Tribune, a NewsGuard certified mainstream and left-leaning paper, is now entertaining the possibility that Elon Omar actually married her own brother so that he could come to the U- U.S. Now, the story is really interesting because Snopes has actually covered this as well. In the Snopes article, they bring up a bunch of interesting points, but they do say it's unproven. Now, admittedly, it's very difficult to prove a negative, but they could at least say it's false or presumed false or there's no evidence, evidence necessarily, but it's unproven, which means it actually might be real. Interestingly, in the Snopes article, they only ask questions why would she do it? Not that she didn't. They mention that they can't prove that she did, but they ask what would be the point anyway. One of the things they bring up is that as the brother of a U.S. citizen, he could absolutely use that to come to the U.S. to emigrate here because U.S. Uh, immigration law allows for that. But the Star Tribune actually brings this up, pointing out that a spouse can come relatively quickly and a brother or sister could take up to a dozen years Actually, it's the Star Tribune now providing a motive as to why Elon Omar may have actually married her brother. They also present a timeline. Within it, it appears Elon Omar's first husband, this her second husband, who people assume uh, are accusing her of being, uh, who are accusing of being her brother, may have lived together at the exact same time. The whole story is very strange. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through this. It's going to be long and complicated, but I think it's very important. If a sitting congresswoman committed immigration fraud and potentially tax fraud when she filed jointly on her uh, tax forms with a man she was not married to, these can be serious, uh, serious issues that people should know about. Further, she's refused to provide her tax documents to those asking about it. So let's do this. I'm not a fan of conspiracy theories. I do believe whether, you know, she she may have married married her brother. It is a rumor at this point. But the reason I want to talk about this now, it's coming to a critical point where the Star Tribune, again, a left-wing mainstream paper is saying, this might be real. So let's just get started with the story from Star Tribune and work our way from there. And we also have a thread from this man, David Steinberg, who says there's actually more evidence to suggest this man may, may be her brother or they're covering something up. Star Tribune writes, new documents revisit questions about Rep. Elon Omar's marriage history. Although she has legally corrected the discrepancy, she has declined to say anything about how or why it happened. So this is a reference to the fact that she filed jointly with a man she wasn't married to. She paid a fine, which is a penalty, but people don't go to jail for this kind of stuff. The story writes, a state probe of campaign finance violations showed that Rep. Elon Omar filed federal taxes in 2014 and 15 with her current husband, Ahmed Hirsi, while legally married to but separated from Ahmed Noor said Elmi. New investigative documents released by a state agency have given fresh life to lingering questions about the marital history of Rep. Elon Omar and whether she once married a man, possibly her own brother, to skirt immigration laws. Omar has denied the allegations in the past, dismissing them as baseless rumors first raised in an online Somali pol- politics forum and championed by conservative bloggers during her 2016 campaign for the Minnesota House. But she has said little then or since about Ahmed Nur said Elmi, the former husband who swept into her life in 2009 before a 2011 separation. So I want to pause here and say uh, these sources I'm going to be using, most of uh, most of them are certified by NewsGuard, a third party rating agency, and I happen to have many disagreements with them. But I use them as a check on my own bias and as sort of a check on anybody who would criticize my sources. Don't take my word for it. I use a third party. So this site is vetted. Now, there is more information that is suspect. And this is brought up by David Steinberg of PJ Media. Now, PJ Media is challenged by uh, NewsGuard, but not for publishing false information for being an opinion source. So there is some consideration here. But according to David Steinberg, he has evidence to suggest Elon Omar may have actually lied, I believe, 
under oath, we'll get to this, about her contact with Elmi, who is accused of being her brother. It's a very, very complicated story, trust me. But let's work through this. Star Tribune writes, the question surfaced again this month in a state probe of campaign finance violations showing that Omar filed taxes in 2014 and 15 with her current husband while she was still legally married to, uh, legally married to, but separated from Elmi. Although she has legally corrected the discrepancy, she has declined to say anything about how or why it happened. The new documents also detail the Omar's campaign, Omar campaign's efforts to keep the story of her marriage to Elmi out of the press arguing that detailed coverage would legitimize the accusations and invade her privacy. Since the recent findings of the campaign finance board that discovered Omar had improperly used campaign money to pay a lawyer to fix her tax filings, the Star Tribune searched public records, including available databases, the marriage and divorce filing, business licenses, university records, and other documents, and could find little publicly available information about Elmi. The search of records could neither conclusively confirm nor rebut the allegation that he is Omar's sibling. But there are questions that need to be answered. I will, I, I'm adding that part. Sent a list of questions about a request to talk to her siblings and father, Omar declined to do so. Hersey did not reply to multiple calls, texts, and emails. Social media posts indicate Elmi is in Africa. He did not respond to multiple emails. Now, there is a point of contention here, as uh, David Steinberg of PJ Media believes, he, uh, he says he can prove Elmi is actually in Nairobi and is very likely working with uh, Omar's sister, which is also suspect considering she said she didn't have contact with them. Now, that doesn't necessarily prove she did, but it does show that they're still very closely tied. And also, public records apparently show that Elmi used Omar's address at a time they had al- after they had already been separated and she claimed she hadn't spoken with him. So let's read on though. Let's get the details. Omar's reticence is consistent with near total silence she has maintained for three years amid questions raised through public records picked over by conservative opinion journalists intent on proving that she committed immigration fraud. Those attacks she once tweeted are the provenance of fake journalists on bigoted blogs. You can't say the same thing about the Star Tribune, and that's why the story is starting to get critical, I would say. It's now being recognized by not just opinion bloggers, but conservative mainstream press has brought it up, and now left-leaning mainstream press is highlighting the issue. This, there's a very real possibility she did this. Omar spokesman Jeremy Slevin issued a statement Friday asserting that the questions about her personal life are illegitimate. In his statement, I'm not going to read it because he goes on to try and he pushes it towards Trump and Trump's base instead of actually answering the question, so I'm, I'm going to ignore that because I find it to be manipulative and, and, and silly. I will add the party says that she has shared the most public, uh, more than most public officials about the d- details of her personal, personal life, even when it is personally painful. He then goes on to accuse anybody who questions this uh, as a right-wing, bigoted, anti-Muslim, whatever, which is unfair and manipulative, so I'll ignore. Star Tribune writes, the questions have nevertheless persisted as a political threat over the years, while the former war refugee from Somalia made history being elected to the Minnesota House and then winning a seat in Congress. But let's move on. Actually, you know what I'll do here? Uh, The Star Tribune makes its point, but it's actually a rather long article. The critics have highlighted key points that they have questions uh, that that, um, they have questions about that they want answered. I'm going to move now to a very quick point. Star Tribune is rated, is certified across the board by NewsGuard. This is very important in terms of whether or not you want to question why I'm doing the story, question the Star Tribune source, take it up with NewsGuard, okay? They've given a green check mark to every category when they rate a news agency. That is the best it can possibly get. Now, David Steinberg contests the story, claiming they've omitted key details. He says, must read, Elon Omar thread. The Star Tribune ran a dishonest, cowardly piece of journalism tonight. For three years, the paper ignored the work of reporters Preya Sansundar, Scott Johnson, and myself on Elon uh, Omar's disturbing past, ignored our emails offering new evidence. Now, Elon Omar is a national disgrace globally. Anti-Semites are emboldened. We warned them. None of this would have happened if Star Tribune, afraid of a PC mob, had not withheld the facts from local voters. Covering their tracks tonight, Star Tribune published. Uh, a piece depicting work we already did, our leads, our research. Did they credit us? No. We are just unnamed conservative activists. We are not activists. We are reporters. They are frauds. They owe us, Minnesota voters, and the global Jewish community an apology. 
I will add, though, I do not believe the piece of journalism Star Tribune done is cowardly. I believe it's a net positive for the story. While David may be upset he's not getting credit and they're leaving out certain key points of evidence he thinks should be included, the fact that Star Tribune has now jumped on the story means we are seeing more mainstream credibility to questioning whether or not Elon Omar actually married her brother so he could move to the U.S. much more quickly. He says, Additionally, their article failed to confirm or even mention far more of our work despite us being able to confirm all that we published. Please read our work, not theirs. He says, the Star Tribune also inexplicably, inexplicably failed to put two facts together on a bombshell development mentioned in their article. Star Tribune appears to have been deliberately vague. I can only surmise that the paper is still covering for Omar. They write, social media posts indicate Ahmed Nursed Elmi is in Africa. They also write that Elon's sister uh, Sahra Noor currently runs her own healthcare consultancy in Kenya. But Elmi's posts and Noor's company are clear about a specific location. Elmi's posts show that he has lived in Nairobi, Kenya since between 12 21 18 and 1 14 19. And Noor's company is clearly located in Nairobi, not just somewhere in Kenya. Further, it's provable Elmi has been working for Noor, apparently helping out with her company website. I can confirm that this is not confirmed. Now, David says it is provable. That's actually not true. And I can, and, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. But let's, but, but, but there is something interesting here nonetheless. He says, look for yourself, visit Grit Partners Consulting slash who we are, then view the page's source code. You will see that Elmi was logged into his personal Instagram account while he was creating the link to Noor's company Instagram account. Well, I actually did look into this. David Steinberg posts this source, uh, this source, uh, this, the source for the website, where we can see that in this highlighted portion, the username is Ahmed Elmi, as an uh, Ahmed N. Elmi. And then the user's uh, profile URL is Grit Partners International. That doesn't confirm that he is working with her, but it is interesting. Now, I have pulled up the site and can independently confirm this does exist on this about section for Sahra Noor, the Grit Partners Consulting who we are. And we can see that the Instagram name was in fact, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. I have the long, wrong one highlighted. We can see up here that the Instagram name, username is Ahmed Elmi. Uh, Elmi and that the profile URL is Grit Partners International. It doesn't necessarily prove they're working together. However, it does provide evidence to suggest the Grit Partners Instagram account once ran with the with, with the uh, display name of Ahmed Elmi, suggesting they work together. It doesn't prove it, but I think it's pretty strong evidence that is likely the case. Um, David takes it a little step further by saying it's provable, and I want to put that out there. It's, it's evidence. That's about it. It's, it's, not, it's not necessarily provable. David says there is no reasonable explanation for this code to exist besides Elmi working for Noor. Um, it could be that Elmi at one point transferred the Instagram account. There's a million reasons to, to, to offer up why that uh, he may have offered the, the Instagram account to Omar's sister. We don't know. I think the Occam's razor would suggest that they're working in some capacity, especially if David says he has evidence that Elmi is in Nairobi as well. I'd, I'd imagine they're in contact. He says, and that's a bombshell. In 2017, Ilan Omar swore under penalty of perjury while divorcing Elmi that she had zero contact with him since 2011 and no clue how to find him. Just one year later, Elmi, having just been divorced without being served, leaves London to work for his ex-wife's sister in Nairobi. It's absurd, yet the Star Tribune chose not to even report Elmi and Noor were both living in Nairobi, if that can be proved. Now, the issue is Star Tribune says they can't confirm the, the validity of the screenshots. Old in, uh, social media posts that show Elmi in, in, um, in Nairobi may have been deleted. Now, here's why this is important. Why would Elon Omar claim under penalty of perjury that she couldn't get in touch with him? Because she needed to divorce him without him have, being able to sign the papers. And if he was in Nairobi, it would be much easier for her, her just to claim she can't get in touch with him. If it's true that she could, well, then that potentially is perjury. Now, I don't want to assume her motives. I don't know why or why she, you know, why she would or wouldn't do this. Uh, Occam's razor would suggest she just couldn't get in touch with him. But there is a lot of interesting information here. And I will stress that the Instagram thing is kind of strange. And the timeline for everything is actually strange, which I'm going to point out a lot of discrepancies moving on. Again, this will be a long one. I'm sorry. It, it's a complicated story, but I believe it's important. Steinberg says, as for what's next, next, the Star Tribune is wasting its time seeking Omar's immigration documents. The documents reveal irregularities, 
such as two sisters born only two months apart, but will not provide proof of a fraudulent marriage. I will confirm here that I've identified other documentation that according to sources and additional evidence will confirm the fraudulent marriage. An attorney is currently assisting me in attempting to obtain them legally. In the following week or so, I expect to either have the documents and be publishing them or will be publishing the information I obtained that led me to seek them. I believe the supporting evidence already places the case beyond a reasonable doubt and looking forward to asking Ian Amar for comment. Now, this is PJ Media. Uh, um, David works for PJ Media. This is their rating on NewsGuard. Take it, uh, take it all with a grain of salt. I disagree with NewsGuard in many capacities, but I use NewsGuard specifically as a shield for critics who would, who would accuse me of not using uh, valid sources. I am showing you this not to tell you you should or shouldn't believe David, but to show you the rating. NewsGuard says they do not repeatedly publish false content, but alleges that they gather and present information irresponsibly, they don't correct errors, and they don't handle the difference between news and opinion responsibly. Now, saying they, they, they do get strikes for not disclosing ownership and labeling advertising. I take less of an issue with that. We're trying to figure out if what this man is saying is true. I believe that based on a statement about proving Elmi is working with Omar's sister, it's actually not true. But NewsGuard believes they're not consistently publishing false content. So I would err on the side of David is probably closer to, uh, it's, it's much more likely his information is accurate within a certain range. So I can respect that. Now I'm going to do this. This is a blog called Front Page Mag, which is rated very, very negatively. They're basically across the board considered to be fake news by NewsGuard. But there is one reason I'm going to use this page, because this is an overt critic of Omar, and they've pulled uh, snippets from Star Tribune specifically to ask specific questions. These uh, paragraphs that were pulled from Star Tribune, they actually exist. So the, ver- the, the, the veracity of, of um, I should say, the credibility of the paper is less relevant when they're directly quoting and asking questions about quotes. So again, take that into consideration why I'm using this source. In this article, they say that Elon Omar could easily clear up within five minutes um, that she did not marry her brother. But they ask an interesting question that I want to highlight, specifically that they shared an address. So uh, here it says, Omar and Almi used a Columbia Heights address on the marriage application. Three months later, Hersey used the same address to obtain a business license for his one-on-one cafe lounge, public records show. Omar declined to offer an account of their living arrangements at the time. Either all three were living together or some of these filings are off. It would be really strange if Elon Omar divorced someone, had had her new husband move in with her, while her ex-husband lived with her, and then, you know, at some point her new husband divorces in their faith tradition and leaves, the timing is all very, very strange. But I will say, if these filings are potentially, they could potentially be off, or it could also mean that Hersey filed a fraudulent address to obtain a business license unless they lived together. Um, So if the filings are off, I would assume it was intentionally misleading. There's a few other uh, questions they bring up. Omar's relatives could also clear the air, but they have remained silent about her marriage to Elmi. She declined to make her family available for the story. They also talk about how she declined to make her tax and immigration records available. While I can understand immigration records, I'm curious as to why she won't release her tax records because people have been calling on Trump to do the same thing. Back at the Star Tribune, it may be that they've omitted information that other people feel to be true, but we're going to operate on this premise. The story highlights that there are many conservative blogs that have made accusations Star Tribune can't corroborate. I can respect that. While David may believe he he can prove certain things, that's fine if he does. Star Tribune is a different source with different editorial standards. If, If they can't independently verify information, I wouldn't expect them to publish it. But I will stress, the Star Tribune picking up the story is a net benefit to David and others who believe they have evidence to prove Elon did marry her brother. If that's the case, a left-leaning mainstream paper presenting the story and saying it is a possibility is only a net benefit as it thrusts the story into the mainstream. It's very easy for people to discredit the story by claiming it's just conservatives and bigots and all of those things, like, like Omar's spokesperson said. It's another thing to say the Star Tribune is doing the same thing. Now, interestingly, the Star Tribune highlights leaked uh, emails that show Elon Omar put together a crisis, uh, crisis management team to try and end to, 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 uh, to try and stop the story, even expressing 
how they were able to get Star Tribune to drop stories in the past. It's interesting now why Star Tribune would be running this story when it would only lend credibility to the narrative she may have married her brother. I'll read the conclusion, but then I want to go back up to the timeline. They say, Omar expressed frustration over the controversy again last October, telling the Star Tribune in an interview that like many refugees without birth certificates, anyone can accuse me of whatever they want and I don't have a way to defend myself. But that's true of basically anything. You can't prove a negative, so I don't know what to tell you. Rep. Mohammed Noor, DFL Minneapolis, lost to Omar in the primary before replacing her at the legislature when she went to Congress. He compared the attacks to, uh, on Omar to claims that Barack Obama was not born in the U.S. Because he took over Omar's state legislative office phone number, Noor's voicemail was getting filled with hateful messages until Google removed the number when people conducted Google searches for Omar. In the end, Noor said, Omar will be judged by what she does for her district. Initially, there were missteps and so much focus on her rather than on what she was doing. She's made some tremendous efforts to reconnect and re-engage and focus on the district. They go on to say that Star Tribune reporters added yada, yada, yada. Now, Omar is controversial for a lot of reasons. She's made a lot of disparaging comments towards a certain country and perceivably a group of people. But I want to highlight something that I find interesting. The only reason I would ever entertain the story is because we are seeing kind of a, um, I don't know, the dam's broken. With the Star Tribune coming out, it's becoming less of a partisan issue and more of a corruption issue. In the timeline from Star Tribune, they say, in 2008, Omar and Hersey, now the parents of two children, reach an impasse in our life together, that's a quote, and divorce in their faith tradition. Apparently, they were, uh, they were never legally married. But a year later, Omar legally marries Ahmed Nur Said Elmi, whom she identifies only as a British citizen. School records show he attended high school in St. Paul and studied, at, uh, studied art at North Dakota State University. In 2011, Omar and Elmi end their relationship and divorce in their faith tradition, but not legally until 2017. A year later, she reconciles and has a third child with her C. Here's what's interesting. The year after she divorces her C, she marries Elmi. And the, and the year after she uh, divorces Elmi, in her faith tradition, not legally, she gets back together with her C. But according to the Star Tribune, there's an overlap in when they lived together. So let me make, let, let me just, uh, I want to make sure I absolutely uh, verify the, the point here where they say, Omar and Elmi used a Columbia Heights address on the marriage application. Three months later, Hersey used the same address to obtain a business license for his one-on-one -on -one cafe lounge public records show. This paints a very interesting picture, which um, I would say is light circumstantial evidence. I wouldn't say it's proof. I would say it's interesting and could, could provide a motive or a, not, not a motive, but a timeline per se. It sounds like assuming that she did marry uh, uh, Elmi to get him into the country faster, that what happened was while she was married to Hersey with children, she in her faith tradition di divorced him. They were never, le never legally married in the first place. But then she married Elmi so he can get to the country. And as, so as soon as he was set to leave because he left around this time, she, remar uh, she reconciled and had a third child with her C. It sounds like this time, show, this time frame shows that she never really left her C. She wasn't legally married to him in the first place. She had kids with him. It sounds like she married this man Elmi while still actually with her C. And then when Elmi left, they didn't do anything. She never legally divorced him. From the timeline to me, it sounds like she was married to her C the whole time. It's possible. That it's just it's just conjecture. They had the, they they use the same address. Somebody filed a false address, or they lived together, which is very strange for an ex husband and wife to do. And you know, for whatever reason, I will say this. However, it doesn't matter if Elmi is her brother. That's a moot point. It's interesting, and I think it's used to severely discredit her. But think about the lighter possibility that Elmi is just a family friend. And she married him so he could come to the U.S., period. Snopes asked, why would she marry her brother when she could file on his behalf as a sibling to have him come to the country? Star Tribune brings up the point that it's because spouses move here more quickly. But why not the simpler question that she committed immigration fraud and she married someone so he'd move to the country? Plain and simple. She never, le she never legally married her C, and she stayed legally married to Elmi even after the end of their relationship. It's all highly suspect, period. I'll leave it there. Nothing is definitive. Nothing. What we know is Elon Omar commit, uh, um, committed a campaign finance violation. 
and she had to pay a fine. She filed her taxes incorrectly, and that's why she was fined. And, uh, I believe she was fined for that and for um, using campaign funds to hire a lawyer to fix the problem. Her marriage is murky and, sus- and suspect. But the story about her marrying her brother came from a single post on a forum, and it might not be true. It may be, mu- it may be much simpler than that. She married somebody so he could move to the U.S. End of story. She, she was in a relationship with her C. She has three kids with her C. My understanding, she has no kids with Elmi. And there's no reason to believe that Elmi is her brother other than it makes her look bad. In documents she's provided to journalists, we don't see anyone named Ahmed Elmi along, among her siblings. So why push that conspiracy theory at all? Why not just say, okay, maybe she, she legally married this guy so he could move to the U.S. like many people do all the time. And she never legally married her C because she didn't need to. Although apparently she filed tax filings with him. It's an interesting problem. I think if anything, that's what she did. It was, it was simple immigration fraud. Marry somebody doesn't come here. But that's my personal opinion. All we know now, she married a guy. He came to the U.S. He left the U.S. And she committed some campaign finance violations and misfiled her taxes. That's where we're at. But I will add with the, uh, the, the final point and to reiterate the main point. With the Star Tribune jumping on this story, it's making the story much more bigger, much more plausible, and as they say, a man, possibly her own brother. We are now moving into the realm where mainstream journalists are starting to challenge the narrative, and we're moving out of the realm of conspiracy theory. When the story first first emerged, it was considered hateful and bigoted, but now mainstream papers are saying, hey, maybe this is true. But I'll end by saying, regardless of the possibility, I think it's somewhat irresponsible. Because a lot of things are possible, and she really can't prove a negative. So take it all with a grain of salt. But I think if we're seeing this uh, mainstream coverage, it's worth talking about at least this far. But I remain a skeptic, plain and simple. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We'll keep the conversation going. You can follow me uh, on Minds at TimCast. And I'll have more videos coming up, youtube.com slash TimCastNews, starting at 6 p.m. For those on the podcast, the order is very different. But thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all next time.